Hey, welcome back. We're going to continue our read aloud with Home of the Brave by Katherine Applegate. We're on the chapter Home, and this is one of my favorite chapters um, because of the events that take place. Home. I take the school bus home. It's a long yellow car filled with screaming, laughing students and many paper balls wet with spit. I don't think it would be easy to drive such a car. My aunt is sleeping when I get home. Ganwar enters with a white basket under his arm. The washing machine's in the basement, he says. The what? I ask. The room, way down at the bottom of the stairs. I'll show you later. He surprises me with a smile like Luol might have made. A big brother making trouble smile. You'll like doing the wash. It's my job. But if you want it, I might let you help. So is he kind of tricking him here, saying, oh, it's so fun to do the laundry. Sure, I say, although I don't trust that mischievous smile. I remember how well Luol and Ganwar used to tease and test me. Always, I was the little child with foolish ideas and silly ways. Always, they were too old to bother with me, unless it was for their own fun. So this kind of tells me they were picking on them. The door to my aunt's room opens and she comes out slowly, yawning and stretching. How was school, she asks. You wouldn't not believe it, I say. They teach you and feed you and I have my own desk. We're going to visit the zoo where animals live and the plan, plan at Arium where stars live. Does he mean the planetarium? And I'm going to learn how to dunk slam in the class called P.E. Slam dunk, Ganwar corrects. Good, my aunt says. Good boy. And she fills a kettle with water to put on the cooking fire. I want to tell her more, but I can see that her mind is visiting other places. I think maybe I'll like living here in America, I say to Ganwar. Yeah. That's what I thought, too. But you'll never really feel like an American, Ganwar says. You'll see. Why, I ask. Ganwar shrugs. Because they won't let you. What do you think that means? Because they won't let you. He tosses the basket on the sofa. I'm out of here, he says, switching to English. Be home by... My aunt begins... But Ganwar is already gone. Time. My aunt sighs and leans against the counter. He's just not happy here, she says. I know it's been hard for him, but he doesn't try. She rubs her eyes. I have to go to work, Keck. I've got an early shift. Eat what you like and go to bed by eight. I learned o'clocks at the camp, I say. It's called time-telling. But why not use the sun and the stars? My aunt points to the tiny clock strapped to her arm. What's the tiny clock strapped to her arm? What's that called? A watch. Here in America, this is the sun. You'll get used to it. For now, just get some sleep. I watch her put on her heavy coat. She isn't even at work yet, and she's already tired. I go to the door with her. Are you? I stop, then try again. Are you glad that you're here? My aunt seems surprised that I would ask such a question. She thinks for a moment. Pay attention to these words and see if you can analyze what the aunt is saying. The freedom is a great gift, she says, to choose your leaders, to walk the streets unafraid, but it's lonely here. And... She hesitates. Hard. What do you think makes it hard? Why is their life in America so different than their life in Africa? To change when you are older, to learn new ways and new words, that is big work. But for you and Ganwar, it will be easier. That's my hope anyways. I watch through the window as she tracks a path through new snow falling her footprints catch the flakes, then vanish like pebbles in quicksand. 
helping. This is another one of my favorite chapters. When my aunt leaves, the apartment grows hushed as the air before a storm. I turn on the TV machine, but the words are coming too fast. My aunt had looked so weary. I wonder how I can help. In the cooking fire room are many dirty dishes. Maybe I can clean them for my aunt. I've seen her wash some plates in the sink with bubbles, but now there are many dishes stacked high. Ganwar said the machine for washing was in the way down at the bottom of the stairs room. Maybe, maybe that's what his basket is for. Can you make a prediction here? So we know what the washing room is for, but Keck has no idea. So there's dirty dishes, lots of them, and he's got the basket, and there's a washing room downstairs. What do you think he's going to do? Carefully, I place the cups and saucers and plates in the basket. With my special key, I lock the apartment door, just as Dave warned me to do. Then I carry the basket of dishes down the stairs to the room of washing. It's good to be a helping person. If my father were here, he would be proud, I think. An ache in my chest comes, throbbing like an old bruise. The way down room smells like a rainy day. I see six white boxes with doors. What are the six white boxes with doors? Washing machines. Some are making noise. I find a sleeping one and open the top. One by one, I put the dishes into the hole. Then I close the top and wait, while all around me, the machines hum and talk. The next chapter. How not to wash dishes. Just then, Hannah appears in the doorway. She's carrying a basket of clothes and a big red bottle. Hey, she says, what's up? I look at the ceiling. Again, does he catch on those figurative languages? Mm -mm. No, that means what's new, what's going on? She laughs. You must feel like I do in Spanish class. The machine isn't working, I say. Did you put four quarters in it? Hannah asks. She reaches into her pocket and pulls out shiny circles. Money, she explains. It makes the machine go. She laughs her good laugh. So again, I just learned that Keck has no idea what money is either. Actually, it makes the world go. Here, I'll lend you a buck. I can't accept such a gift, I begin. But she just waves her hand. You can pay me back later. She places the four money pieces into special holes in the machine then pushes them. Noise begins, like a tiny river flowing. It's working, I cry. Technology at its finest, she says. Of course, you still have to dry it all, then fold it. Fold it, I ask, but I didn't understand. I'll show you. Let me sort these clothes real quick. Hey, you doing anything after this? We could go upstairs and watch some TV while we wait. That would be good, I say. I would like something to do. Ganwar and my aunt aren't home. My mom, either. Well, she's not actually my mom. She's my foster mom. She works the four to midnight shift at the quick stop. She pauses. That means she works at night. Kind of like your aunt. So now we're kind of introduced to another social issue where we talk about um, adoptions or we talk about um, that whole blended family, that not everyone's family looks the same. So now we just learned that Hannah um, lives with her foster mom. I watch as Hannah pushes white clothes into another machine. These machines, they wash clothes and dishes, I say. Mama will be amazed when she sees this. Hannah looks up. Did you say, but just then the river stops and my machine begins to shake like a crazed dancer under a full moon. It's eating my dishes, I cry. Please make it stop. 
Hannah lifts the top of the machine. The horrible noise of its giant teeth stops. She peers inside. What's going to be inside? Whoa, she says. I think this is what they call a problem with translation. Meaning, when we translate things, when he said it's a washing machine, he thinks that it washes everything, but we know that really it just washes our clothes. I'll read one more chapter. Not smart boy. I don't want to cry. A man must show strength in the presence of a woman. But if I had to choose between kissing a crocodile and telling my aunt the news of her broken dishes, I would choose the crocodile any day. I look into the hole. Hannah looks too. It's not a good thing to see. I have many more dishes, but they are smaller. Many more dishes, but they're smaller. So what does that mean? They're all broken. I look at Hannah. She looks at me. I cannot say why, but when I look at her, I feel like I've gulped down a laugh that needs to fly free. I laugh, then she laughs. Then before I know it, we're hard on the, we're on the hard floor laughing. Perhaps this is my punishment for trying to do the work of a woman, I say, wiping a tear away. Did he just really say that? The work of a woman? So now he's saying that dishes and laundry are work of a woman? Social issue. Hannah punches my shoulder. Hey, in this country, a woman can do anything a man can do. She gets to her feet and grins. This is your punishment for being a moron. A moron is a not smart boy, I ask. She laughs. You got it. I laugh too. I stand and pull out a piece of a plate. Maybe I can fix these. Well, I suppose we can glue some of the pieces together. Put them in your basket and we'll see what we can do. But don't get your hopes up. I'm used to hearing that, I say. I hope you enjoyed that part. That's one of my favorite parts in the book because it really demonstrates how Keck doesn't understand the English language, um, the way the words are used. So he knew what a washing machine was, but he didn't realize that it, a washing machine is only for clothes.